welcome to the Tuesday edition of the DC Today. Coming at you again from beautiful and a little warm and muggy Nashville, Tennessee. Um, markets dropped a little today. Actually, not all that bad in the Dow. It was a little worse in some of the S&P NASDAQ areas, but nothing all that severe. It, it's only um, debt ceiling stuff and more or less nothing really to report, actually. The, the drama... Um, you know, with the negotiations, all the rage, there there wasn't uh, any breakthroughs that announced an imminent deal. There wasn't any, you know, falling apart of the deal. And I'm telling you, it's going to kill me if I have to just keep saying this stupid nonsense every day. Um, but I don't really want to ignore it because I think some of you want to know. And obviously, it's what the media is talking about. But when the news is they're talking and, oh, there's no deal, and what if there isn't? And and then, you know, oh, it looks like they're making progress, but they're still not done. And so kind of making a story out of where there isn't a story, it really bothers me. Um, and it isn't the way I like to communicate with my clients, and yet there isn't a whole lot going on in financial markets at the moment, and that's that's sort of what the volatility is around and people trying to front run and guess and and all that stuff. And that's fine. That's what traders do, but it isn't really what we do. And yet I have to talk about the story behind it anyways. So forgive me if I'm cranky about that, but it isn't really the fact that I have to go talk about this stuff. It's that the um, press is, is be clowning themselves and it, it, it bothers me. So um, I'm sharing a little from my heart with you, uh, but I'm actually not because I'm holding back substantially of what I really want to say. Uh, I put a little chart in the DC Today today uh, that I think just captures the shiny object moment of the last couple of years beautifully in visual form. And there's a company called Zoom that was in the news yesterday having released their quarterly earnings. And I think a lot of you have heard of it because a lot of people use it all the time. And we use it quite a bit on various video communication devices. Many people had never heard of it before COVID. And it was a stock that was trading about 70 bucks before the, they shut our world down. And it went up to six, nearly 600 bucks. And now it's back around 70. And just seeing the chart of that mountain, um, it, you could almost fill in any number of other companies. Some have not been so lucky as to come back to a pre-COVID level or even a little lower in pre-COVID level in this case. Some um, have, have gone far, far, far lower than that. And I've talked about those, uh, you know, like Beyond Meat type uh, 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 vegetable plant or plant-based uh, meat product things and uh, uh, Peloton uh, issues where, with the exercise bike stuff. That Anything related to kind of, I don't know, shiny objects of that period of time, some have gotten just killed for worse than even their pre-COVID number. But the visual that is in the dctoday.com today, I think is worth remembering. Uh, for a lot of reasons, not because it won't happen again for humans, but I hope it will never happen for clients of our firm. Okay, so Dow was down 231 points, which is about 69 basis points as a percentage. S&P was down close to double that um, at 1.12%, and the NASDAQ was down nearly double that at 1.26%. And you had materials, technology, and communication services, all three down 1.5%. That was most of the market drag. Energy, which has not been an outperformer as of late, was up over 1%. So that was the one positive in uh, sector. And oil prices today were up over 2%, coming back to $73.5 uh, per barrel. Um, the bond market didn't move much. Ten-year was up a little bit as the uh, yield came down two basis points. The um, But there was some volatility in the up and down movements, and that was largely around just this stuff with the with the uh, d discussions going on with Speaker McCarthy and some of the delegation of negotiators with the House and with the White House. Uh, new home sales for the month of April, the volume uh, of transactions was up 4.1%. Um, and they and that was all from over 100% of that was in the South and the Midwest. And you had a decline of transactions in the West and the Northeast. Um, median prices nationwide now are down 8.2% from a year ago. And if you think April of last year was about the peak of prices, it may end up being May 
you know, but the the median prices now you're getting you're going to start to get that base effect of where they are now versus the high level of a roughly a year ago. My thought all along has been that we're looking at somewhere in the range of 10 to 20 percent of what they'll drop from. And they're now at 8.2. So we're getting kind of close to that level. The other economic data point came today was ISM. Manufacturing was down a little, uh, not much, but it was down, showing some contraction. And then services were up. So the blended global uh, ISM number was um, actually up on the month. But again, with a little bifurcation between goods and services, we've seen that for a little while. Somebody asked me if I, and asked David if I was worried about money market funds right now kind of getting all the rage and is this a sign when everyone's piling into something, almost sort of my shiny object thesis, but even just the general reality that a contrarian like me is dealing with where when everyone's going into something doesn't mean it, it could potentially become a big problem. But I do want to point out, I have written a Divin Cafe on this in the, in the past and I didn't put the link of that old one in. I'd have to go find it. But, um, you know, these things when we talk about people piling in and then a bubble forming and, and, and collapsing, it, it does always involve debt. I mean, people are, are buying the bubbled asset class with levered dollars. And, that, and that's really where you get something systemic. And that's where you get something more violent. And, and, and the question is whether our money market could break a buck. But you have to remember that the underlying um, assets in a money market mutual fund are the most liquid assets in the world. And, the, and the, we're talking about commercial paper, um, AAA type uh, credit qualities. Um, CDs at banks, and then, of course, treasury bills are the lion's share. And the, when people bring up the, the reserve fund, the primary reserve fund uh, was a money market that in the two days after Lehman Brothers declared bankruptcy, allegedly broke a buck that they were looking at a bid of 97 or 98 cents on the dollar on the screen, and the Fed quickly came to work, and the treasury panicked, and and all these things. And th th there's some truth to it, but you got to remember that there's two different things that we just did. Does the does the money market fund have the liquidity to meet redemptions? That's a liquidity question, and my answer is yes. And then on the solvency side, like was there an underlying price deterioration that comes out from a credit impairment? And you had one money market fund for two for about five minutes that really ended up having no um, deterioration, but uh, the Fed had to make some liquidity available. But basically fear of what their exposure to either Lehman or AIG was back in that very specific moment of September 08. So then there was, that was a solvency question. So I don't think that people right now are questioning the solvency of the ingredients inside of a money market fund. And I don't have any concerns about the liquidity. So a whole lot of people piling in with unlevered dollars just isn't the type of thing we're talking about generally when we refer to everyone, you know, tipping a boat over by going to one side of the boat. I hope that makes sense. There's kind of a categorical difference and that liquidity versus solvency issue is one of the most important things in corporate finance to understand. So um, clients are gonna receive their uh, weekly portfolio holdings report bright and early tomorrow morning. Governor DeSantis of uh, Florida will be announcing his entry into the presidential race tomorrow on Wednesday. And of course, we'll continue with the media soap opera around this debt default, debt ceiling uh, stuff. Uh, who knows what will happen? Expect some volatility before this is done and expect that volatility to be part of what gets it done. But in the meantime, it is immaterial to you, you great collectors of dividends for years and years to come, how this uh, Beltway drama plays out and let alone how the media covers it on the way. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for reading the DC Today, and I will see you tomorrow, Wednesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.